How are we doing, Ryan? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm good. Good. Thanks for the time. Um, looks like you guys got a couple of uh, of weapons to uh, to add to the offense with your uh, your first and third round picks there. Um, wondering uh, if you've gotten uh, you know a look at those guys, any any clips or any information on them, and and maybe what your thoughts are and what they might be able to uh, to add to the team. Yeah, I haven't been able to you know see them besides the, the clips I saw you know when they got drafted, but um, talk to talk to Art about them, talk to. Coach Brayville about him a little bit, and i uh, really excited to have, you know, um, got a really big player in the first round. I think he's, what, 350 pounds, which is insane. It's a massive human being, but uh, glad to have him in front of me, you know, help him keep me upright and open up holes for, for the back. So i uh, really excited about that. And I think we got a weapon in the third round there, uh, a guy we can move around, um, put him outside. I think he returns kicks and has been explosive on special teams as well, but a guy we can use as a weapon, as a receiver, out of the backfield and split them out and uh, really just kind of create matchups by, by moving them around. Uh, Teresa Walker. Hi, Ryan. Uh, this virtual offseason program and this whole offseason that's uh, so unusual and no answers at this moment, how much does it help this team that you, Henry, there's so much of a core of this Titans team that just a few weeks ago was playing for an AFC championship game. Does that help this team maybe try to pick up and keep things together until there is football? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I think obviously every every year is a new year and, and what you did last year doesn't really matter this year, but being able to bring back the number of guys that, that we have coming back, you know, so many guys returning back on offense, guys that, that know the offense, um, that have, have been in it for, for multiple years and uh, can just kind of build on, on what we did last year. So, yeah, I think it definitely helps us back, especially in this type of situation when we're not able to get in the building and spend a lot of time around each other and the coaching staff. But um, guys that are already kind of familiar with it, now we're just able to go a little bit more in-depth, in detail, uh, on a lot of things that, um, you know, we did last year and make small adjustments that can only make us better. Uh, Jim Wyatt. Ryan, good to hear from you. Thanks for doing this. I asked uh, Kevin Byard the same thing, but what, what's the day in the life of Ryan Tannehill uh, during this stretch, uh, during kind of the quarantine? So it's uh, not so exciting. Um, usually in the morning, uh, get up a couple days a week, I'll go throw. Uh, you know, I'm down here, John who's down here. so. I go throw a John New a couple days a week uh, down here in South Florida, uh, get a get a workout in, uh, run uh, on the field, then come back to the house, have some breakfast. Uh, usually spend a few minutes with the kids there, then uh, head out. To, I have a little gym at my house, head out to the, the gym and uh, get a workout in. So uh, depending on the day, upper, lower, combination, uh, recovery, uh, could be yoga, could be Pilates, uh, something like that. And then uh, usually by, by that time, it's, it's getting close to lunch. Um, spend, spend a little bit of time with the kids, have some lunch, whatever that may be. Uh, my wife's really holding down the cooking. Um, I think she's probably sick of cooking because she cooks every meal, but uh, she does her great job and uh, keeps us all fed and happy. So have some lunch. Uh, and then in the afternoon um, kind of just depends what, what the day is. You know, it's uh, projects around the house. I'm a guy who can't really sit still and, and not do anything. So I don't really watch much TV or movies or anything like that during the day. I'm a guy who has to um, do something. So it's either, you know, working on some football, watching some tape, um, going over uh, a playbook, or uh, if I have anything around the house, like one thing I'm working on right now is hanging up a, a pull-up bar in my jump. So uh, trying to get that all squared away and up. Of course, I'm no pro, so it's taking me multiple trips. Uh, to pick up supplies and, and recut wood and, and stuff like that. So um, definitely could happen faster, but getting it done and uh, enjoying, uh, you know, family time uh, along with just being able to, you know, start preparing for 2020 season. Uh, Buck Rising. Hey, Ryan, hope you guys are well. Uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to talk yet with the new quarterback, Cole McDonald, if you've had any opportunity to see any of him, uh, just kind of your initial impressions and if you've had a chance to talk talk with him yet. Yeah, I texted a little bit with him. You know, I text all the guys when we drafted him, uh, just kind of you know, welcome to the team and um, reach out if, if I can help in any way, you know, love to love to help out. But um, yeah, I texted with him a little bit, excited to have him in the room. I know he's a, 
a guy who played played a lot of football at a high level out there, threw for a ton of yards, and a uh, really athletic guy. I think he was the fastest guy at the combine. So I think he'll uh, fit in our room nicely, and uh, looking forward to working with him. Emily Proud from Channel Two. Hey there. Um, are you putting any extra weight on your on your shoulders from a leadership standpoint, just given the unique circumstances as, as far as you know reaching out to rookies and making sure everybody's ready to go? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I don't know if it's extra weight, but it's, uh, just something that, that goes along with playing the position, you know, it's something last year I kind of had to take a step back from, uh, initially for, for a big, big stretch there in the off season and, and the first part of the season, which was different for me. So I was kind of taking a step back and, um, figuring out the role where, uh, you know, this year I just kind of get to be myself, be the leader that I am and, um, hopefully bring guys together and, and elevate their play. So we've got a writer from uh, Kansas City, uh, Perez, who's joining us. He's got a question for you. Hey, Ryan, congrats on the new deal. And thanks for doing this, man. Um, yeah, thank you. Hey, obviously the media kind of ran wild with like the Tom Brady to the Titan speculation. And then like, then you get just get signed to like a lucrative new deal, like right on the tail end of that. Like, what was that like for you? Kind of like hearing the speculation during that process, man? Yeah, I really didn't know, you know, what was going to happen. You know, obviously I knew we were in negotiations and kind of kind of working on it. But, uh, you know, you don't know as a player, you don't know if those things are, are real, if they're, you know, trying to play both sides of the coin or what. I just tried to, uh, you know, stay true to, to the things I believed in and, and um, lean on the people that I love and, and just trying to trust the process. You know, I knew if, if they wanted me back, then, then we were going to get it worked out. And if, and if they wanted to sign Tom, then they probably would have, would have signed Tom. So, um, you know, I, I try not to lean or, or, or listen too much to it. Obviously I was aware of, of the situation. I knew it could be happening, but I wasn't, you know, sitting at home stressed, you know, you know, what, what could happen, what could happen. Cause at that point it's really kind of out of, out of my hands and, um, you know, I'm thankful the way it worked out. I was excited to be back. I wanted to be back. Uh, I like the guys and I love the guys on the team. I, I, I like the direction that this program is headed up, what we did last year and how I think we can build on that, you know, going into to my year two with the, with this team. So uh, obviously excited to be back, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say that, that it was uh, nerve wracking day by day or anything like that. Uh, Chris Harris from Channel 4. Yeah, hey Ryan, good to see you, man. I was Thanks. wondering, you know, in, in a sport that's just so regimented schedule-wise, where you do X and you do Y to get to Z, like what what's this unknown and ambiguity like for you, especially at your position? It's strange, no doubt about it. It's strange, you know. It's uh, it's weird not being able to to be in the building and, and spend the time around the coaching staff and the guys. Uh, really missing missing that aspect right now. Um, I always look forward to, to getting back in the building and, and spending time around the guys and uh, just, you know, coming together and I'm not able to do that right now. So it's strange, but I think, um, I think what's variable in art and, and really guys have really bought into what we're allowed to do. And that's, uh, you know, all virtual, but um, trying to make the best of the situation, you know, do the best we can with, with what we've been given. So uh, really trying to learn in these meetings, uh, you know, have some fun talking with each other, but then also uh, really kind of buckle down and detail things that that we started last year can build on this year. Uh, Terry McCormick. Ryan, you talked about having thrown a little bit with John U, who's down there in South Florida with you, but overall getting to work with the receivers and, and whatnot this offseason, if, if that doesn't come to pass, uh, what what are some of the things you can do to try to get caught up on that uh, and get that make sure that timing stays uh, crisp once things are reassembled? Yeah, I mean, as soon as as soon as uh, we're able to kind of get back together, I think uh, we'll do that. And and um, thankfully, like I said, we have a bunch of guys that are coming back and um, you know are pretty familiar with each other, so uh, not a whole lot of of new learning to do as far as learning guys body and how they come in and out of cuts. It's just kind of, you know, getting back on the same page. So of course that'll take a little bit of time. Uh, hopefully, you know, this thing doesn't last too long. We can get back to that sooner rather than later. Johnny Franks. Mm. 
Nope. Joe Rexroad. Yeah, Ryan. Hey, I wanted to ask you uh, about Corey Davis. Uh, you know, big year for him. What do you think? You know, he could do. How do you think his role could expand this year? And and just you know, maybe even your chemistry with him grow. Yeah, I definitely think my chemistry will grow, grow with Corey this year. Uh, such a talented guy. I mean, we see all seen him make big time plays and made a bunch of big plays for us last year, but. You know, I think that um, he's such a talented guy and has so much to bring to the table. You know, obviously uh, looking forward to, to building on what we started last year and in our rapport and uh, look forward to him making some big plays for us because I know he has the talent. I've seen him make the plays and, and really excited to, you know, see him just keep, keep growing and, and make those plays in 2020. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Eric, back right. Hey, Ryan, hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm curious, how much does an offseason where you know you're the starter and everyone knows you're the starter, how much does that benefit you going into the season just in terms of preparation and knowing what to expect? Um, I think it it just clears things up. You know, I think uh, leadership-wise, it makes things a lot, a lot simpler for me. You know, I can just kind of be, be who I am and um, help guys along the way I like to. It's not figuring out a new role or, or anything like that and uh, charting into unknown territory. You know, I just kind of get to really just buckle down and, and um, try to dig deeper into this offense, the details of it, and then also just be myself as a leader and, and try to help our guys all grow. Paul Kaharski. Hey Ryan, I'm wondering. Um, good to see you. I'm wondering how, <clears throat> given given the circumstances, um, you can you can lead from from afar and and not assembled. You've got this off season, like uh, uh, Eric was just talking about, with a chance to um, be the starter from the start. But with the guys not assembled. Um, how, how can you kind of assert yourself as a leader with some guys leaving and stuff where uh, you, you can establish that from afar via Skype and all this, all this kind of stuff? All right. Of course, it's tougher. It's tougher at a distance, you know, either looking through a screen or, or text message, phone call, FaceTime. But I think it all starts with communication, you know, just being able to communicate with guys, build that relationship. And then when we are on a Zoom call, when we are – um, talking football, then I'm able to just really voice my my vision for a play, voice my opinion on the play, how I like guys to, to run the route, uh, and just be clear so that we're all on the same page. You know, I think as a backup, a lot of times couldn't do that. You know, you couldn't say your opinion or, or how you wanted to run the guy to run the route. Uh, you just kind of had to just kind of go with the flow and, and bite your tongue a lot of times. So uh, really being able to be more clear and and more detailed with guys on, on how um, we can run things and, and create more separation. You find it possible to do that in, in these zoom meetings and stuff even. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Art, art does a great job of, you know, allowing me to, to speak up and um, you know, if I interrupt him to, to say something, of course uh, he doesn't, doesn't get uh, upset by that or anything like that. He encourages it. He wants me to communicate to these guys. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, the more trust that a quarterback has in the guys running the routes, then the better we're going to be. So, um, you know, if I can communicate exactly what I want and they're able to, to do that and put their own flavor on it, then, you know, we're going to be in better shape. Thank you. Uh, Luke. Hey, Brian, I want to ask you uh, two quick questions about the logistics of, uh, of having the virtual meetings. First of all, as a quarterback, what do you try to get out of all of this? Um, I don't know, several things, you know, I think it's, it's the uh, same as a meeting in the building, the same stuff you're trying to get out of the meetings you have in the building, you're trying to get out of these, these zoom meetings, you know, it's um, getting back to the offense, detailing out plays. Um, obviously we're making some changes on some things and, and being able to communicate those to the guys. Uh, and like I said, just a few minutes ago, just being able to communicate exactly what I want on um, a certain route or a release or at the top of a route. Um, same stuff we're doing in a, in a traditional meeting when we're sitting in a room together, we're doing the same thing here, 
uh, just not face to face through a screen. And then secondly, you know, Kevin Byard was talking about, you know, maybe someone's dog starts barking in the middle of, of the conversation or whatever. What are some of the challenges that come with the digital meetings? Yeah, it definitely presents some some different challenges. You know, you got connections that you know, can go in and out or, or background noise. You know, I think um, we really kind of picked it up quickly. Um, you know, we did a, a test meeting last week I did with the guys just to make sure that everyone had an account set up and I knew how to kind of navigate the, the program. And then, uh, you know, once we kind of jumped into it this week and we figured out pretty quickly, it works best if, you know, everyone stays on mute and, and, um, it eliminates all the background noise. And if you want to speak, we can, we can unmute and, and speak. But, um, I think guys have, have really done a good job of, of being professional about it. And, um, you know, I think learning and growing from these meetings. Teron. How's it going, Ryan? Hope everything's well. Uh, in the absence of being able to have a, a passing camp, if that is something that you can't do, have you put any thought into spending time with the guys just watching film just to be able to get on the same page as far as like if they give us this look, I want you to go here, et cetera. Is that something that you've considered? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Once we get a little deeper into this thing, um, as far as uh, going through the offseason, installing the plays, and, and I'll be able to, you know, have a little extra time to spend with our, our receivers and, and watch tape um, virtually, you know, just uh, just me and them. And then, you know, hopefully, like I said, sooner rather than later, we can, you know, get face to face and, and actually throw to each other. Uh, we're going to give Johnny one more shot, see if he can jump in here. Hey, Ryan, uh, looking back, what did you learn about yourself last year as your role changed during the course of the season? What did I learn about myself? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I, I learned about myself. You know, I think, um, you know, I try to do the best I can with, with every situation that I'm given. You know, when I was in the backup role, I tried to do the best I could at supporting Marcus, at being prepared to play, and at preparing the defense to, to go uh, play on Sundays by giving them the best look I possibly could, you know, on scout team. So um, nothing really changes is, is just what you're doing changes, but your, your thought process and, and what you're trying to do doesn't change as far as, all right, now I'm in the starting position. Now I'm going to prepare the best I can to, to go in a football game. I'm going to uh, try to make the guys around me elevate their play uh, and lead. You know, I think um, what you do can change, but but your goal, you know, I think doesn't change. You know, you just try to do the best you can with the situations you're given. And if you do that, then, you know, you have nothing to uh, to look back on and regret. Okay, we've got two left. Uh, Paul had a follow-up, and then John's got a follow-up. Clinton. You, you mentioned uh, Arthur inviting you to kind of interrupt. Kevin said on, on the defensive side, they're simply in, in position groups. Are you just talking quarterbacks right now, or are you in any kind of bigger uh, meetings at this stage? Yeah, we're doing quarterbacks and receivers at this point. Um, so we have, I think, seven or eight receivers on there, along with uh, quarterbacks and, and coaching staff, receivers, coaches, art, and quarterback coach. So we have a, a decent sized group there, um, but just trying to, like I said, talk through routes, talk through everything and, and just get on the same page. And then uh, at some point we'll start meeting uh, a little bit more with, you know, running backs and tight ends and O-line uh, as we expand. Thanks very much. Yeah. Glenn and I'll finish us up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Ron, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, Logan Woodside is, as things stand right now, uh, you know, is the, is the backup quarterback. Uh, you've got a, a bit of a chance to um, to see him, uh, you know, last year. What are your thoughts and impressions on on Logan? And, uh, you know, is it realistic to uh, to think he could be a a number two, um, you know, for, for an NFL team? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I have a ton of confidence in Logan. He's grown so much, you know, just in my time, you know, here with the Titans. Um, from, from when I came in in the spring, you know, he's been nothing but – attentive and, and hungry to, to grow and get better. And, you know, I saw him do that over the course of the year, you know, did a great job of, of helping me out, helping Marcus out in any way we needed and, um, and really just get better uh, on the mental side. You know, once he went on IR, he wasn't able to, uh, 
to practice and, and do it physically, but um, he was, he was growing mentally. I could see him growing the questions he was asking um, the notes he was taking, you know, it just got better and better as the, as the year went on. Uh, and obviously he got to saw what he could got to see what he could do in, in training camp last year. And so definitely a talented guy, guy who's um, can make all the throws and, and put the ball accurately where he wants to put it. Uh, and now seeing over the course of the last year, you know, the mental aspect of his game grow so much. So I'm really excited to, uh, to see him get back on the field and, and, you know, watch him play.